Hello everybody and welcome. In this video today I am going to be taking you through a full cold start and preparation of a class 66 locomotive as it is in real life. We're going to use the Train Sim World 3 class 66 for reference so you can see just how it compares to the real thing. If this happens to be the first video you've seen by me, then my name is Richard and I am a former passenger train driver and a freight train driver based in the southeast of England. I'm also a father to four wonderful children, which is where the dad rail name comes from. I do sign class 66s in real life, so hopefully I should know what I'm talking about, but we'll, we'll see how we get on, as with all these videos. I do have to tell you guys that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own and may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. I'd also like to point out that I overall I'm very happy with the Class 66 in Trains in World 3. There's quite a lot on it which doesn't resemble reality, which isn't 100% correct, and you're going to see that as we go through this video. But out of all the train driving simulators on the market at the moment, the Class 66 in Trains in World 3 is probably the most realistic. It's a really fun, interesting locomotive to drive in-game and I think it's been simulated really, really well. So the purpose of this video isn't to kind of say they've missed this and they've missed that and everything else. It's just to kind of give you guys an overview of um, how we would do things in real life compared to how things are done in the sim. So without further ado and with those declarations in mind, we're going to jump into Train Sim World 3 and have a look. So first thing to note is I am doing this completely on the fly. This is being recorded live. Um, I'm in game, sitting in front of the computer, recording this, it's unedited. So let's see how we get on. So here's our class 66, 66109 for the day. And basically we've been told to come out into the yard and prepare this locomotive for service. It's going off light engine somewhere um, and we've got to get it ready for service. It's completely dead, the parking brake's on, the engine is shut down and we are gonna get it ready. So the first thing I would do, approaching the locomotive, is do a full 360 degree walk round. So, approaching the front of the locomotive, the first thing we're looking for, the front of the locomotive, is just for general damage on the windscreen and the windscreen wipers. So we can see the windscreen, windscreen wipers are good. We're checking the yellow cover there, which is the multiple operation cover, making sure that's down. And we're just checking for sort of general damage. Now the thing here that stands out to me are the two pipes on the front of the train. So this red pipe is your brake pipe, this yellow pipe is your main res pipe. These pipes should not be hanging, they should be stowed away. Um, so if you look at the prop of a, at the front of a, um, a real 66, you'll notice that these pipes are stowed on brackets um, in this area here. Hoping you can see my cursor on the screen. Um, they're stowed in brackets there, so we're checking that. We're also checking, we don't have it on here because this is a Buckeye locomotive, but we'd also be checking to make sure that the coupling on the front of the locomotive is stowed away properly. So yeah, checking for general damage as we walk around there, checking the pipes, um, checking the buffers, all, all just sort of general damage and general wear and tear. As we come down the side of the locomotive, I'm opening up, opening up all these boxes here. These are the sand boxes, so I'm opening that, them up and checking that we do have sand inside. As we walk around, I'm checking the brake blocks on the wheels. So just making sure that we've got good brake blocks, they've got little um, wear indicators on them, so we're just making sure that um, there is sufficient wear in those. Coming around again, we're just sort of checking for general damage. We're checking that the chains on the bogies um, are intact there. Um, carrying on, and we reach the battery box, which is this thing here. So this little switch here is your battery isolator. And what you need to do is you need to turn that in order to get the battery in. Now this is not simulated in game. Um, basically that is like your big on your master switch without that in the on position you can't start the train you can't turn the engine on nothing works that's your battery isolator so as we walk past that we're just going to flick that into the on position so coming around again I'm checking the sandboxes on the side I'm checking the fuel cap here making sure that's screwed on sometimes it's normally it's connected to a chain so it doesn't go very far but sometimes the shunters may have forgotten to screw it back on and we're checking to make sure we've got enough fuel for the journey uh, trains do run out of fuel and that can be quite embarrassing <laughs> um, when that happens. So again, more sandboxes there, we're checking um, brake blocks, we're just checking sort of all these caps and stuff are on and everything looks as it should do. The other thing we want to be checking as we're walking around um, on the wheels is to make sure there's no wheel scotches in place and making sure there's no not to be move boards on the side of the train. So like I say, we're doing a full 360, so we come around to the other end of the train checking the same things noting again that these pipes should be stowed away. Unfortunately there's nothing we can do about that in game. 
It's coming down the other side of the train. We are pretty much exactly the same. So we're just checking our sandboxes, checking for not to be move boards, checking for wheel scotches. Um, we are checking to make sure that all the pipe work looks good and there's nothing hanging off the side of the train, no visible damage um, and stuff like that. Okay, so something wrong with the locomotive here. This battery isolator is only on one side. This is not on both sides. Um, I suspect the parking brake is the same. I've just got to run round. No. So as you can see, if we just look on this bogey here, you've just got the plain bogey. If we come round to the other side, you've got this chain here. That is correct. That is only on one side. And that chain is on the side that the um, battery isolating switch is on. So this chain here and this bar here is your parking brake. Inside here, you can just about see it there, there is a chain. If that chain is slack, we know the parking brake's off. If that chain is tight, then we know the parking brake's off. So yeah, so we completed our 360. We check the sandboxes, check the fuel, check there's no wheel scotches, check there's no um, not to be moved or depot boards on the locomotive. And we're quite happy all but those pipes hanging off that the locomotive is good to go. So what we want to do now is jump up into the back cab, no apologies, jump up into the leading cab of the locomotive, the cab we plan on uh, driving it from. In this case, this is the number two end cab. So we're jumping into the cab, and what we want to do, just want to check a couple of things in here for the minute. So we just want to check that the straight air brake, this one here, the direct air brake, is in the release position, which it is now. We also want to check that the isolation switch on the board here is in the down position. If this isolation switch is in the up position, we're going to be unable to start the engine. So we just want to make sure that's in the down position. For the minute, that is all we want to check in this cab. Um, we want to check for the key as well. The key on a class 66 um, is kept on the locomotive somewhere. I won't tell you exactly where it is for obvious reasons. Um, but you just want to check to make to see if it's been left in this cab. And if it has, you want to pick it up and put it in your pocket. The next thing we're going to do is walk through the engine room. There is a door, there's a passageway here and a door at the end. Um, unfortunately, in game, we cannot walk through the engine room. But what we'd be doing now is walking through the engine room. And on the walk through the engine room, we're going to be checking um, the oil levels, we're going to be checking the coolant levels, we're going to be checking the uh, position of various isolating cocks within the engine bay. Um, we're going to be checking the uh, air filters and all stuff like that within the engine bay. So come, having come through the engine bay, we are going to arrive in cab number one, or, or the opposite end cab. Now when we get into cab number one, we've got these lovely electrical cabinets. And what we want to do is just pull those open and just check that all these uh, MCB circuit breakers are in the up position. There we go. Um, that one is opposite for some reason, but just checking all of those are in, in all the cabinets. Having done that, we're going to take a seat and we are going to get ready to do a full prep on this cab here. Just as it's starting to rain, how lovely. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to want to do now is check the um, fault book. So in the cab there'll be a fault book, it's normally kept over here somewhere and you're just going to have a little look through that and see if there's any faults or anything that's been reported on the locomotive. So we're going to pretend that this locomotive is all good to go. And what we're going to do now is pop our key in. There we go. Cancel the AWS off. And we're going to check that we want these first three switches to be up, but we want the isolation switch to be down. The isolation switch is up, the engine will not start. So we've checked the one in the back cabs down, and we've checked that this one is down. We are now going to press and hope for the best, the engine start button. Now, in most cases, the engine's just going to take a few moments and it's going to come to life. However, if the locomotive has been sitting for a period of time, the engine may want to do a full pre-lube. And it can take 15, 20 minutes to do this before you can start the engine. So our engine is now running, just as it would be in real life. 
And what we want to do once the engine's running is push the isolation switch into the up position. What that's going to do now is basically connect the engine and generator together and it's going to start feeding all the um, auxiliary supplies such as the air compressor uh, and stuff like that. So what we want to check now is that we've got air in, inside the train, which we have. Our main res pressure is way too high. This should be about 8.4 bar in the real thing. That's absolutely sort of miles out there. Um, but we've got air, which means we can start our cab prep. So the easiest way to do a cab prep is to start on the left hand side and work your way round. That's what I find is the easiest way. So we start on the panel up here. We're going to check our cab lights. Just flick those on and flick those off. Yep, we can see they're working okay. We're going to check our desk lights. Um, which I don't believe are simulated on here. But you've got sort of little lights just underneath that cover there. There's a little light which comes on. Like a little reading light. We can check our instrument lights. There we go. On and off. Uh, we'll leave those in the on position for now. Uh, we can also check our tail lights. Now the tail lights are modelled incorrectly on here. When I flick tail lights on, they don't come on, but they do come on in the back cab, um, which is actually incorrect in a 66. So we we'll turn our tail lights on. Then we're going to check our other lights. So we go into daytime, check that's working on the repeater panel. Into yard work, check that's working. Into night time, check that's working, and then into off. Next thing we want to do while we're on the lights is just come down here and press the hazard light button and just check that the hazard lights are flashing as we can see on the panel there. Anything wrong with the lights then you need to report that and to your control and then the decision will be made as to whether that can go out into service or not. Um, for example if your towel lamps are not working you might be able to use a portable towel lamp likewise with headlights um, you could use, possibly use a portable headlight. It's the carrying on clockwise around the cab. We've got our demister on or off. And our brake test switch which is currently in the service position which is where we want it. So we're going to set our lights up for running. This is going to be the back cab. Um, so we would set our tail lights on. However, like I said, the tail light switch in this cab seems to work the ones in the other cab. Which is completely wrong from real life. So carrying on going round, the next thing we get to is the data cord 6100 screen. Uh, otherwise known as the Qtron. And what we do on here as drivers, the only option we've got on this is train length. But as drivers, this is where we enter our PIN number, in, um, which is like our personal logon for the um, data recorder on the train. So we put our PIN number in. Um, won't tell you what mine is, but you put your PIN number in there, press enter. It will then ask for your train ID number. You pump your train ID number in, press enter. Press enter a couple more times, um, and that will log you into the train. Which basically means when your manager comes to download the train, they'll know exactly who's been driving it by the information you've entered into there. You would then enter your train length if you know it. Um, if you're a light engine like we are here, you won't have um, a train list. So a train list is a document that you'll get which will give you your length, your weight, your brake force, your maximum speed, etc. etc. Um, but if you're a light engine, you won't have that. So carrying on around the cab, we get to the electromotive screen. We turn that on. We can press the crew button on there, which doesn't work on here, and that will tell us of any faults or anything that we've got on the locomotive or in the engine. So we just press that and have a little scroll through um, and see if there's anything detrimental to us on there. We then carry on around the cab. We get to this board here, which you can't see very well. Um, this is what we call the bingo board, and on here we've got six fault lights. And um, What we do is we press each one of these individually, and they light up and the press on them is purely just to test that the bulb's working. So we're pressing each one just to check it's lighting up, just to check that the, um, the bulb's working. So carrying on around the cab, we come down and I want to check our windscreen wipers, especially on a day like today. So we're just going to turn the windscreen wiper there. That one's good. And we're going to do the same for the um, second man side there, which is also good. So we are good to go in that respect. The next thing we need to do is our personal or static brake test. And the way we're going to do this now is by making sure we have a brake holding the locomotive. Now if we release all of our brakes, this locomotive is going to roll away and we don't want to be doing that. So as you can see here we've got our parking brake in the uh, parking brake is on and we've got the indicator here parking brake on. So what we can do now is fully recharge our brake pipe. So you can see the brake pipe control needle coming up to 5 bar. 
on a class 66 and all freight locomotives or locomotives in general you need positive air pressure to release the brakes. The 5 bar would be a full brake release. The indicator you can see here is the actual brake pressure that we have against the wheels. So what we do with our brake pipe fully recharged we check that our brakes are fully released which they have. We then drop the brake pipe down into the initial position and we've observed that our bogies have come up there. We drop our brake pipe down to 4 bar Again, we're observing that the brakes are actually applying at the axles. And then we push that all the way forward and give ourselves a full application, checking again that the brakes have actually applied. We're then going to hit the emergency plunger. And what we want to see is this drop right down to zero and the brakes stay hard on. So there we go. That has proved that the emergency plunger is working. We pull that out to reset it. And we're going to recharge our brake pipe all the way back up to 5 bar. And we're going to observe the um, brake cylinder, the bogey indicator there, the brakes are going to fall off. Just coming off now. The next thing we want to check is our direct brake. So we're going to fully apply that. Check that the bogey's come up there again. We're going to, what we're going to do is going to release that a little bit and then try and hold it at a couple of positions coming down just to verify the hold function on that's working correctly which it is we're then going to check our horn very quiet horn on here that's not particularly realistic at all um, and then we're then going to do something called a DSD or driver safety device test and the idea of the driver safety device is to test um, the idea of the DSD test is to test that the driver safety device is functioning correctly. Your driver safety device and your vigilance device are basically this pedal here. And the idea is, all the time the train's in forward, you need to keep your foot on that pedal there. If you take your foot off the pedal, you'll get an alarm goes off, which is like beep, 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 beep. If you don't put your foot back on that pedal within, I believe it's seven seconds, you'll get a full emergency brake application. Likewise, if you've got that your foot on that pedal for more than 60 seconds and you haven't touched any of the controls, you'll get the same noise going off and you'll have to lift your foot off the pedal and push it back down again, which is known as the vigilance device. So we need to check that that system's working. So what we're going to do is place the locomotive into forward. In real life now, the alarm would be going off. Beep, 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 beep. What we'd want to do is put our foot on the pedal, which would silence the alarm, and then lift it off the pedal again. After we've lifted it off the pedal, we're going to wait 7 seconds and eventually this brake pipe control here is going to start dropping all the way down to zero. Our GSMR radio, which this 66 is not fitted with, is then going to start beeping at us like da 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 Lots of nice sound effects in this video. Uh, we're then going to press the X button on the GSMR radio, um, which is basically then resetting that and making sure we don't send an alarm to the signaller. So with the, um, I've covered this in some of my other videos, with the DSD alarm and the vigilance alarm, if they are activated after 60 seconds, it'll automatically send an alarm to the signal box to say that you've had a DSD or vigilance activation in your cab. And basically the purpose of that is if you've become incapacitated at the controls, um, then at least somebody's going to know about it. So by, yeah, by doing that, we would have dropped the, the brake pipe would have dropped once again to zero. So we're going to put it back into neutral. We're going to recharge the brake pipe. We're going to put the train into reverse without taking the key out. And we're going to do exactly the same thing again in reverse just to verify that's working. After we've completed that, what we want to do, what we want to do whilst we're completing that, as well as, as well as the pedal there, you also have this lovely DSD holdover button on the other side. So if you're not sitting in that seat driving for some reason, you've rushed over the other side of the cab to have a look out this window, you might want to look at back down the train. Um, you can press and hold this button here, which does the same as um, which does the same as holding the pedal down. You also want to check the horn on this side. Make sure that's working as it should be. The other thing we want to check in the cab is to make sure that all of our emergency equipment is where it should be. So there's none of it's modelled on here um, but you will have stuff like red flags and detonators within your cab, red flags, detonators track circuit, operating clips um, brake poles and stuff like that none of that is modelled on, on here on the simulator so um, you can't check any of that but you would in real life you would in real life what we're going to do now 
is going to make sure our switch is in the down position. Just the isolation switch. We're not worried about any of these. Just that one. We're going to put our reverser into the middle. And remove our key. Take the key out. Put it in your pocket. What we want to do as well this end is just check that the um, direct brake is in the release position. Uh, I did say in one of my other, my other Class 66 videos, if this direct brake is in the applied position, um, when you get down to the other end of the train, you won't be able to release the brakes. So that needs to be in the release position. So, we now get out in the rain. It's entirely up to you at this stage if you want to walk back through the engine room or you want to walk down the outside. Me personally, um, I'm going to walk down the outside of the train. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't like going through the engine room when it's running because it is extremely noisy. So we're going to jump out into the rain. Ah, uh, come on, close. There we go. You'll see lots of 66 is driving along with doors open. Um, some people have asked me before if that's okay. Yeah, it's it's not ideal, but it's not going to do any harm. So now we're in the leading cab. This is the cab that we plan on driving our train from. And basically, we're going to repeat exactly the same as we've done in our previous cab. So we're going to start up here. We're going to go through. We're going to check all of our lights. Um, we're going to check all of our brakes are working. We're going to check the horns working uh, and, and everything else. So the one thing I don't think I've covered is in train sim. Now, if you want a specific instructions about how to get the 66 working in train sim, then I have done a class 66 train sim world uh, tutorial. But in train sim, you've got this brake cutout here where you can cut the brakes out and cut the brakes in. In a real 66, you've got a um, something called an E70 cock, which is in the engine room, and that basically does the same as this. So you would have gone into the engine room and you would have checked that. So yeah, we're going to work our way around this cab. We're going to do exactly the same in this cab as we would have done in the other one. So we're going to test. Um, we won't do it because we've just done it. We're going to test all of our lights are working correctly. Check the windscreen wipers, check the horns, check the brakes are working correctly. Um, check we've got our switches in the right position check we've got all of our emergency equipment and we are pretty much good to go. Now the next thing you're going to want before you depart is to do a full brake test. Now as we are at the moment we are only a light engine. When you're a light engine you do not need a full brake continuity test. We've done our brake test within the cab, we've checked our controls are working and we'd be happy with that. But let's say in this situation here we've got 20 wagons on our train. How do we know that the brakes are operational on those wagons? We are going to need a brake continuity test. And this is how we do a brake continuity test. So we check that we do have some sort of brake holding the train. So in this case we've got our parking brake on so we know the train's not going to roll away. What we want to do... Let's just get this set up how we want it. What we want to do is we want to recharge our brake pipe to 5 bar. Now I said we've got a handbrake on or a parking brake on so the train won't move. If you've got a very, very heavy train or you're on a severe gradient, the weight of the train can actually push the locomotive. It can, it can overpower the parking brake. Um, so that's something just to bear in mind. But for the purpose of this video, we'll pretend we're in the yard, we're on the flat, we've got 20 wagons on. So what we're going to need in order to do a full brake test is a shunter at the back of the train. Our responsibility as a driver now is to fully charge the brake pipe up to 5 bar. You can see that's at 5 bar. And what the shunter is going to do, the shunter is going to go to the back of the train and the shunter is going to check the brakes on the last two vehicles on the train. The shunter, so the shunter is basically going to walk up to them and they're going to kick the brake blocks, just visually check them, make sure the brakes have released on the last two vehicles of the train. They're then going to, using a radio, normally using a radio, if you haven't got a very long train they might shout at you or they might use hand signals they're going to ask you to put it into test so this is your brake test switch you're going to flick that into test now as you can see the outside needle has dropped to zero and effectively what we have now done is we've now trapped air within the brake pipe so we've isolated the brake controls completely and we've trapped air within the brake pipe what's going to happen now is the shunter at the back of the train is going to open if we look at our train here again, you can see on the red pipe and the yellow pipe you've got isolating um, cocks at the top of them. So on the red pipe at the back of the train, the shunter is going to pull the tap open and the air is going to drain out the back. 
So what you want to see in the front of the train is you want to see this brake pipe control needle go right down to zero. So there's no way of actually simulating <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no way of simulating that um, within the game. But yeah, the shunter's going to open the tap at the back. You want to see the brake pipe needle drop to zero and you want to see this bogey indicator come full up. And basically what that's demonstrating to you is that you've got brake continuity throughout the train. So the action at the back of the train has affected the front, which proves that you've got brake continuity. So the shunter's then going to go around to the rear two wagons, check that the brakes are fully applied on the rear two wagons. They're then going to go back to the back of the train and shut the tap. They're going to radio you up, tell you it's a good brake test. You're going to put your switch back into service. And you're going to fully recharge your brake, type, brake pipe back up, which we are doing now. Once your brake pipe's fully charged up to 5 bar, you're going to press this button here, which is brake overcharge. So what the brake overcharge does is puts 5.5 bars of pressure into the brake pipe. Now as I said earlier, you only need 5 bar of pressure to release the brakes. But by overcharging, putting 5.5 bar in there, it just kind of balances out the air throughout the train and throughout the distributors. So what will happen is your 5.5 bar goes in over time, maybe 2 or 3 minutes, that extra air is going to bleed off the train and that's going to drop down to 5 bar but by having put that in there we've basically forced the system to self equalize which is just going to ensure that all the brakes are actually off throughout the train so we're going to wait for our overcharge to come back we're going to release our parking brake there we go parking brake off we are going to get authority from the shunter or whoever's in charge of the yard and we're going to be on our way simple as that so yeah, as you can see, there's there's a few things within the um, there's a few things within the game that are not simulated that are not right. Like I was saying, the um, battery isolation switch on the side of the train, for example, that's not simulated correctly. That should that should isolate your battery and turn your locomotive on and off. Um, the parking brake chain is not simulated correctly because our parking brake is in the off position now, so that chain um, should have slacked off. You've got issues with these. Um, coupling hoses here, these should be stowed away but they're not, um, issues with the towel lights and stuff like that, so there are sort of a few issues in game, but overall and I've, I've played a fair few train simulators, this has probably got to be the best 66 of all of them the sounds are really good, it drives really well, and to be honest with you all the things that I've pointed out uh, probably only sort of something like, some, um, something like a, a driver like me is going to notice I sort of think general public um, and sort of your average game player is not really going to notice those things so much. So they are kind of sort of really, really nitpicky. So there we go, guys. I hope this video has been of some interest to you. I'm hoping as I've talked you through the full prep of the locomotive, I haven't missed anything out. If I have missed something out, there's going to be a 66 driver moaning at me in the chat that I've missed something. So <laughs> I do apologise for that. But if you have enjoyed this video, guys, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing. That would be absolutely great. Like I said, I've done a few videos on the 66. I've done a full tutorial on there, uh, full tutorial on fault finding. I've done a um, basic drive through of the 66, sort of demonstrating it and giving my thoughts on the actual driving side of it. So this kind of just rounds it off nicely now with the, um, the full prep video. So yeah, like I say, if you have enjoyed, like and subscribe. You can check me out on my social media channels if you want to. They are on the screen for you right now. Or, if you really, really want to, you can join my Discord server where we've got a really friendly community. We talk about trains, aviation, buses, transport in general, and just life in general. And you'll find a link to that Discord server in the description below. Once again, guys, thank you very, very much for watching. I'm going to press that button there, which should start the end music. And I hope to see you very soon in another video. Until next time, create, share and inspire.